Good morning, everybody. Morning. This is Russ and Cheryl, and we are in the chapel, and we are going to read today the Beatitudes. And uh, this is part of a series that we're going to hopefully do if you enjoy it, and just let us know. Um, we are actually in Matthew chapter 5, the first part of the Beatitudes, and then we'll follow up later with chapter 6. Okay, this is the New King James Version. And seeing the multitudes, he went up on a mountain, and when he was seated, his disciples came to him. Then he opened his mouth, and he taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they rival and persecute you, and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. So let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Do not think that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy but to fulfill. For surely I say to you, till the heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one tittle will by no means pass from the law till all is fulfilled. Whoever therefore breaks one of these least of these commandments and teaches men so, shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does and teaches them, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say to you that unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you will be by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not murder, and whoever murders will be in danger of judgment. But I say to you, that whoever is angry with his brother without cause shall be in danger of the judgment, and whoever says to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. But whoever says, You fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar, and go your way. Go your way. First be reconciled to your brother, and then come and offer a gift. Agree with your adversary quickly while you are on while you are on the way with him, lest your adversary deliver you to the judge, and then the judge hand you over to the officer, and then you be thrown into prison. Assuredly, I say to you, you will by no, no means get out of there until you have paid every last penny. You heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you, whoever looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her heart in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and cast it from you, for it is more profitable for you that one of your members perish than for your whole body to be cast into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and cast it from you, for it is more profitable for you to have one of your members perish then your whole body be cast into hell. Furthermore, it has been said, whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you, whoever divorces his wife for any reason except sexual immorality, causes her to commit adultery, and whoever marries a woman who is divorced commits adultery. Again, you have heard it was said of those of old, you shall not swear falsely, but shall perform your oaths to the Lord. But I say to you, do not swear at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by earth, for it is his footstool, nor by Jerusalem, 
for it is the city of the great king. Nor shall you swear by your head, because you cannot make one hair white or black. But let your yes be yes, and your no be no. Amen. For that is more than these... For, the, so, for whatever is more than this is from the evil one. You heard it said that an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, but I tell you, do not resist an evil person. But whoever slaps you on your right cheek, turn to him the other also. If anyone wants to sue you and take away your tunic, let him have your cloak also. And whoever compels to go to one mile with you, go too. Give to him who asks you, and from him who wants to borrow from you, do not run away. You have heard it said that you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy, but I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you, use you and persecute you, that you may be the sons of your Father in heaven. He makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brethren only, what do you do more than others? Do not even the tax collectors do so. Therefore you shall be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. Yes, and Russ, what spoke to you in all this? I mean, um, to me it was, um, do not swear and take the Lord's name in vain. I mean, I hear that so often. You know, I swear to God I'm going to do this or that. Or um, just flippant and profane uh, comments here and there and getting people to try to do something wrong just by what you're saying. It's just such a bad thing. So that's what really spoke to me. Uh, what spoke to me was um, about being a light on a hill, a beacon for other people to see. I think too often as Christians, we get kind of like wrapped up in worldly events and even our own life crisis at times, we get kind of upset about things and we lose focus or get side railed, you know, and it's easier said than done. I mean, we've all been there before where, you know, we try to lean on the word, read in the scripture and we may believe in our hearts, but we don't act in our faith. Right. You know, so. So true. So we hope this blessed you today and Amen. we will be following up with Matthew 6 shortly. Thank you. God bless. Have a good day.